Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is episode 632, and it is Black History Month. And so in honor of Black History Month, we're going to look at how African Americans help transform dentistry. Now, also... In fact, I was planning on, you know, also in February is Children's Dental Health Month. And I said to myself, oh, as I was preparing for the show, I'll do Black History Month this week, and then I'll do a Children's Dental Health Month next week. And then on the way in this morning, I looked at the calendar. <laughs> and uh, uh, March 1st is next Sunday, so I will have missed it. That means I'm probably going to weave in a little bit of a Children's Dental Health Month here to this show, most likely at the end, but we will see. All right. Um, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I want you to be ready. I'm going to give you the phone number. Don't call yet, but I'll give you the phone number now. You can pre-program pre it into your phone, 614-459-9769, 614-459-9769, in about 10 minutes. Okay. Also, before we get started, I'd like to remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com and we're streaming live on Facebook. Okay, I think that's it for the housekeeping. So, let's start with, um, the, you know, probably just a little synopsis here, because it's always fun to talk about the first of this or the first of that, right? In the late 17th century, African-American patients had a tough time seeking proper dental care. And unfortunately, dentists of color were even harder to come by. Prior to dental schools, aspiring dentists learned the trade through apprenticeships, which was often limited to white practitioners. When the first dental school opened in 1840, it refused to admit students of color, a trend that continued for a couple decades. These barriers limited care to underserved communities and dissuaded bright and capable applicants from pursuing medical careers. Didn't stop everyone, though, and here are three African-American dental pioneers. Number one, Robert Tanner Freeman. The child of slaves, Dr. Robert T. Freeman emerged from poverty to become the first professionally trained black dentist. He entered Harvard Medical School in 1867, four years after the end of the Civil War. Following his graduation, Freeman mentored black youth who wanted to pursue careers in dentistry. Number two, George Franklin Grant. Dr. George F. Grant enrolled in Harvard Medical School shortly after Dr. Freeman. Upon graduating, he became the university's first black faculty member and taught at the School of Mechanical Dentistry for 19 years. Number three, Ida Gray Nelson Rollins. Growing up in a single mother household, Dr. Nelson Rollins worked as a seamstress to support her family. Her career path changed when she took a part-time job working for Dr. Jonathan Taft, and uh, he was the first dean of the University of Michigan School of Dentistry. Soon after, he admitted uh, Rollins to the U of M, and she made, became the first black female dentist. So there we have the first African-American dentist was Robert Tanner Freeman. That You might want to remember that, because that is probably going to be part of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Dr. Robert Tanner Freenum, Fre Freeman. <laughs> I said, that was a slip. You know what a freenum is? That's that little ligament that uh, under your tongue. That's called the lingual frenum, and on the outside of your lower lip, there's a little thing that hangs down there. That's a frenum, and you have one up above your upper lip by your two front teeth. So a uh, little slip of the tongue, and there's another dental joke, right? <laughs> slip of the tongue. <laughs> All right. Robert Tanner Freeman, the first African-American dentist. Okay. So 
Now, there's an article written by, um, oh shoot, what is her name? Uh, Dr. Bobby. She goes by Dr. Bobby. Dr. Bobby Peterson. Okay. And I can't remember where I found it, but I want to give her props for doing it. And so, um, basically there's, it starts like this. We need more black dentists. According to Dr. Jane Sinkford, Associate Executive Director of the American Dental Education Association. Dental schools are only graduating 300 black dentists out of 5,000 each year. And, um, I, this was written in 2019, so that must be pretty close still. And I didn't realize that because there were uh, a number of uh, black dentists in my dental school, I mean, in my uh, uh, grade and my group of uh, graduating class, and I, I've seen several since then. But maybe it, maybe maybe because maybe OSU is ahead of the game and maybe the other schools are catching up. Who knows? So when it comes to having access to high-quality health care, minorities still lag behind their white counterparts. Research shows, and that, can that, and that can include dental and orthodontic problems that get postponed or go untreated. It's a huge problem because regular checkups and care are critical to keeping your teeth and gums healthy. That's according, according to the author of this, Dr. Bobby Peterson. Oh, here's how you can find her. You go to www.allthingsdrbobby.com. She's an orthodontist who is an African-American. One contributing factor to the limited care of for minorities is the lack of diversity in the medical profession. Studies have shown that minority patients are more likely to visit uh, medical professionals who are also minorities, but diversity among dentists does not mirror the overall population um, at all, according to the American Dental Association. In a 2015 study, for example, just 3.8% of dentists were black, while the nation's overall black population was 12.4%. Meanwhile, just 5.2% of dentists were Hispanic, compared to 17.7% of the overall population. Okay, for many people this does matter, and there's even a mobile app and website called HUED, H-U-E-D, that tries to match patients with black and Latino doctors. Of course, for many people, there might not be any medical providers whose offices are that close to them. This is doc according to Dr. Bobby Peterson. Even in a place as large as Brooklyn, she happens to be only one of three black, fe black female orthodontists with our own office, meaning not working for someone else. The lack of care for minorities has become a concern for years, and some of the issues that have been raised include, um, and you know, I've seen some of this in my own office. Don't really have to read her article, but um, they include uh, minorities have more oral health problems. African Americans and Hispanics have significantly greater rates of untreated cavities than non-Hispanic whites, according to data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. African Americans and Hispanics also have disproportionate rates of tooth loss, according to the CDC as well. Would those statistics be different if the patients had access to a dentist or orthodontist who is a minority? Perhaps, though other factors could also play a role, such as the cost of dental care. Still, in 2015, psychiatrist Damon Tweedy wrote in a New York Times guest column that black patients are more likely to feel comfortable with black doctors, and studies have shown they are more likely to seek them out for treatment. Trust can be an issue. In that same column, Tweedy wrote that compared to other races, black patients are less trusting of physicians and their medical advice. As a result, they often delay or refuse needed treatment. Peterson says she has seen that in her own practice, how important it is, how important trust is. In fact, trust is important no matter what color the medical professional is. It's probably the primary thing, I believe, that will make a patient say yes or no to treatment even if they need it. I mean, they can be in uh, pain when they come in, and uh, if they don't trust you, you know, if I've, I've told uh, my uh, staff and my uh, associate doctor, if at any point uh, the patient believes that you're, you're examining their wallet instead of their mouth, you're, you know, you're dead in the water. So you have to really, really take care of the patient and uh, let them know that you care about them and that, um, hey, I, I say things like this. So, you know, this is what you need. If you can't afford it, that's, that's, you know, that's okay. We'll think of an alternative plan. But, you know, just the fact that you can't afford it doesn't mean you don't need it. And it's very, it's very, and I can show them, you know, x-rays. You see this on the x-ray. This is a, this is what abscesses look like. Or I take a photograph and I show them, this is what rot looks like. This is what decay looks like. You know, this is what a fistula look, looks like. Or, so anyway, okay. So anyway, the mouth and face are, are two really intimate zones as part of your personal space. To allow someone into that personal space, patients have to trust them. And I've, it's funny because uh, when I, uh, I've, I gave, was given a talk to some third graders, this was several years ago, and um, um, I, I asked the, I, I always bring the mask with me 
because I want the kids to see it. So if they come to an office like mine where we wear this clear plastic shield, I don't want them to be taken aback. So I asked the class, does anybody know why I wear this? And I would flip the clear plastic down and the one little boy raised his hand and he said, yeah, because dentists have germs. <laughs> and I go, well, you're right about that, but so do people. And, um, uh, and uh, he didn't quite grasp that. I said, everybody in here has germs, and so I'm, I'm protecting me from your germs, and it's also protecting you from mine. But why did I mention that? It's, it's because in talks to dental students or people that come and shadow me, uh, they're not used to seeing that shield either. And uh, when I'm trying to explain to somebody who might want to become a dentist, one of the things they need to keep in mind is that you have your own personal space. Everyone does. And just as an example, what I'll do is uh, we'll be talking and then I'll walk up to them. And I'll walk up real close to an uncomfortable position and you'll see them kind of walk back or step back or kind of lean back. And I use that as an example to point out how if you're going to be a dentist, you have to be willing to let other folks in your personal space. It's not something that people realize. In my case, the shield, it's not really for that. Uh, I can see right through it, so it doesn't make me feel like I'm any further away. But at least it does prevent me breathing from breathing on you or them breathing on me. Oh, I just noticed that I didn't start the uh, slideshow on the video portion of this. I always forget to do something. <laughs> so those of you that are watching, sorry, it has a little panel that says uh, Black History Month. Now you're going to see the pictures that uh, go with it. <laughs> sorry about that. So anyway, um, okay, so I'm just going to wave there. And, uh, okay, so, uh, um, yeah, just a reminder then, if you are, uh, if you want to watch this show and you want to see pictures of some of the first African-American American dentists, you're going to be able to do that. And, in fact, just, uh, just for that reason, let me put a picture of Dr. Tanner, the very first African-American dentist. There it is. Okay, so let's see here. So we talked about trust. Reaching out to the community is important, and Dr. Peterson says it's important for healthcare providers to reach out to their communities, especially in areas where there are low-income families who can't always afford care. She often volunteers in community schools to teach students and staff dental health and to provide free screenings to middle school students. These are all things that I do, and when I do them, I will tell you that the, it's a disproportionate amount of the uh, kids that come to these events. The dentists are from the heart. When we take our, our mobile, uh, um, the motor home with dental equipment in it, and we go out and do free exams and that sort of thing, it happens to be oftentimes children of immigrants. The speech, like the, oftentimes they don't speak English, and uh, we feel really good about doing that because we know we're making a difference. So uh, reaching out is important. And I think in the case of an African-American uh, dentist, reaching out is important because, oh, by the way, the photo that's up there right now is Ida Gray. Ida Gray Nelson Rollins, who went on to be the first African-American female dentist. Anyway, <clears throat> so... We, we really, we live that, we believe that, we, uh, we love helping people, you know, giving back, and uh, uh, it's, uh, you never know who you're going to inspire and for how long, and so it's really neat to maybe be that person that 10 years from now you might hear a story that I was really inspired by Dr. Kvitko and his staff because he came to my school, or he got in his big motorhome and came and did a, an exam on me, so anyway, motorhomes are memorable, so that, that could happen, who knows. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're gonna have a, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from uh, DeSantis Florist. And so um, the question of the day, though, before we do it, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, today we've been talking about the history of African Americans in dentistry. The question is, who was the first black dentist? Was it A, Maya Angelou, B, Rosa Parks, C, Jesse Jackson, or D, Robert Tanner Freeman? 
All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Yeah! Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavitko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavitko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have callers on the line, and, and I know we have Sharon, Gagne, and Steve. And uh, I know Sharon was a little bit looking for the phone number. She sent me a, a, a message on my Facebook uh, broadcast. I thought that was cool, Sharon, to let me know you didn't know the number. Anyway, but uh, we rolled a dice over the break, and it's Gagne. So, hey, Gagne, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling in. Who is, right, remember it was A, B, C, or D. Do you want to go by the uh, letter or the name? The letter. The letter is easier to remember. What is it? D. That's right. Robert Tanner Freeman. Very good. You probably didn't know that until you listened in, right? <laughs> I've been listening for all morning and every day. Awesome. I love 95.5. Yeah, you love Sunday 95. Okay, cool. Well, you're going to win the free flowers from uh, DeSantis Florist. Stay on the line because we need to get you uh, get our information from you as to where to send them, Okay. Yay, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, so congratulations to Gagne. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is uh, episode 632 of The Reasons We Smile. And we are highlighting Black History Month. You know, I saw it both ways. I saw it um, African American History Month, and I saw Black History Month, and I never know really what's correct. It feels like both are okay right now, although it does seem to go back and forth. So I hope um, I'm getting it right. But anyway... So, what I want to do is uh, bring you this, okay, this one here. So, um, this is an article. It was uh, posted uh, by Implant Admin. It was from 2015. I don't know the name of the, uh, of the author. Sorry about that. It may come up in the end. But, uh, anyway. So, by most accounts, the history of black and white dentistry crosses in the late 19th century, and appropriately, even at that early juncture, there were more similarities than differences, starting with the fact that no matter which race was performing the work, it was an extremely painful and primitive experience. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that, but it really was. In lieu of formal training, dentists learned their trade by way of apprenticeship, kind of like barbers and blacksmiths, and gradually gained enough hands-on skills to open their own practices. But without standardization, without textbooks, and without generalized theories on treating oral disease, or maintaining oral health, standards were unreliable. When teeth became touched with decay or were otherwise ailing, the doctor knew of but one thing to do. He fetched his tongs and dragged them out. If the jaw re remained, it was not 
his fault. <laughs> that was a joke by Mark Twain in his autobiography, um, Who is Mark Twain? Reflecting a common sentiment of the time. Eventually, these stereotypes came under fire as the number of apprentice dentists grew, but word also spread of their botched care. The dental community recognized these shortcomings and began to change. In 1839, the first dental journal was published, the American Journal of Dental Science, and in 1840, the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery welcomed its first class. Four years later, American dentist Horace Wells began using nitrous oxide to anesthetize his patients, significantly reducing their level of pain during operations. The Road to Race Recovery By the 1860s, dentistry was rapidly transforming in, to, er, in technological and cultural ways, and in 1867, the newly created Harvard Dental School, part of Harvard University, accepted its inaugural students. Among those 16 students was, as we mentioned earlier, 21-year-old Robert Tanner Freeman, the son of former slaves. Uh, we already mentioned him, but we'll go ahead. According to his historical accounts, um, Freeman of Washington, D.C. was long interested in dentistry and began learning his trade from Dr. Henry Bliss Noble, his white friend and mentor, who was also friends with Harvard Dental School's first dean, Dr. Nathan C. Keep. Dr. Noble owned a dental practice near the White House along Pennsylvania Avenue and, breaking with racial attitudes of the day, pushed his young friend to apply. Doing so, he said, according to the dental historian Dr. Clifton O. Dummett, would allow him to help alleviate some of the challenges black America faced, as well as becoming a credentialed dentist at a time when there were only some 120 African-American dentists in the entire country. Dr. Keep, like Dr. Noble, broke with standard racist educational policies and vowed his new school would know no distinction of nativity or color in admitting students. So, as we mentioned, in 1869, he, Dr. Robert Tanner B. Freeman became the first nation's deg degreed African-American dentist. Okay. Uh, and then, he, by the way, after he graduated, he returned to his native Washington, D.C. and opened his own private practice in the same building as Dr. Noble. Now, when I read that, I thought, gee, why would you compete with, <laughs> with the guy that helped you do this? Uh, but... Um, Anyway, I'm sure he was welcome, and uh, there were plenty of uh, dental issues to go around, as there are today. It may look, folks, like there are enough dentists or maybe too many, but the fact that only 40% seek dental care on a regular basis, we would probably not have enough dentists if people actually all went. We'd be working like crazy. Okay, so unfortunately, this is really sad. Dr. Freeman, Dr. Robert Tanner Freeman, was robbed of a long and storied career. After only four years of practicing, he died likely from cholera. Isn't that sad? Nevertheless, his professional accompl accomplishments and the distinction with which he fought to achieve them fundamentally altered his family's trajectory. Dr. Freeman's grandson, Dr. Robert C. Weaver, Ph.D., became the country's first African-American cabinet member and also the first secretary of housing and urban development. Dr. Weaver was sworn in 18 and a half months after passage of the Civil Rights Act. That's pretty cool, huh? Looking like it's time for us to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to continue a little bit of a, maybe a little bit more of uh, Black History Month and dentistry, but we may also spend uh, our last uh, time uh, talking about Children's Dental Health Month. We'll see. All right, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile, episode 632. Uh, we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, die just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby. You see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, General Dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> back 
Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 632 of The Reasons We Smile. It's Black History Month. It's also Children's Dental Health Month. And so I think, um, let me see, let me just do a little bit more of uh, Black History Month and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, so as much as we celebrate the lives of these leaders, it's important to remember that African American History Month is as much about the present as it is about the past. Uh, and today, for as far as the Amer African American medical community has come, the latest findings continue to show that not enough black dentists are graduating to meet patients' needs. Dr. Jane Sinkford, Associate Executive Director, we mentioned this earlier, says there's not enough uh, uh, black dentists being uh, graduated. And um, so the same thing for Hispanics. The lack of black dentists has created something of a historic holdover. While other professions have long achieved racial integration, where a black professional is no more exceptional than a member of any other racial or ethnic group, black dentists can still be viewed as a unique neighborhood addition, an achievement worth noting, which is exactly what East Texas News Network KTRE did back in 2007 when it reported that Dr. Dallas Pierre, after 38 years, was still the city of Lufkin, Texas, population near 40,000, only black dentist. That's amazing to me. Wow. By the way, each dentist uh, can handle approximately um, 2,000 patients, you know, you can get up to uh, four or 5,000 if you have an associate, so I guess I need to not count that number, about 2,000. So in a, in a town with 40,000 people, wow, that means that 200 dentists, right, could be uh, uh, to serve that community, and only one of them is black. Very interesting. But like I said, my experience has been different because I went to school with some, some black friends and, and uh, several graduated right after me. And so anyway, but hopefully... We are getting closer to the um, e equality, the equity that everybody would like to see. Okay, so let's change gears, Children's Dental Health Month. And, um, you know, basically what it is, is trying to bring an awareness to parents uh, about their children's teeth. So here's the biggest thing you can know as a parent is be very careful about using filtered bo or bottled water. Both of those take the fluoride out. You think you're doing an awesome thing by giving your child this very pure water and really all you're doing is setting them up, up for cavities. So uh, you, can have, uh, you can have your dentist write you a prescription for fluoride drops. You can make your own fluoride water uh, if you want to still purify it, uh, that you can uh, put a drop into a gallon of purified water. Not, not just one drop, that's not the recipe by the way. You need to get the instructions from your dentist or your pharmacist. I'm just saying that you can fluoridate your own water and make sure you do. The other thing would be uh, most parents don't realize that um, when by the time a child is uh, starting to lose their baby teeth, so their first front use it to lower comes out, what you don't know it is two or three months ago, they got their six year molars, which are adult teeth. People don't realize that it, their, your child has adult teeth. You think everything's a baby tooth um, until you see that one uh, fall out. Well, it's not true. So you have to make sure that if they can't brush well, that you brush for them. And a child can't possibly brush properly or well enough until they can tie their shoes 10 times in a row. So if they can tie their shoes 10 times in a row, you may not have to, you may have to like replace those Velcro shoes with some tie shoes <laughs> or have them tie yours, but uh, then they can brush. So that's a big deal. The other is making sure that you bring them to a dentist early. You know, bring them at age two. We'll, we'll take a look. They'll get used to possibly the, uh, the whole idea of what a dental office looks like. And it'll be almost like a pretend visit. Uh, if they'll open their mouth, great. We'll look at their gum pads. If they won't open their mouth, it was a, you know what I mean? It was a run through. We, we call it a pretend visit. Bring them back when they're two and a half. We do the same thing. When they're three is usually when we can actually get everything accomplished, which would be a couple x-rays. It would be an exam. It would be a cleaning. It would be a fluoride uh, treatment. But um, you need to um, get them into that system, okay? And these are, you'd be amazed at the number of cavities we see in what otherwise would be very, very smart, very, very nurturing, caring parents, okay? Because let's face it, you haven't been a parent for very long, so you don't know all this stuff yet. <laughs> you don't know what your mom and dad might have done or whether there was fluoride in the water at your dentist. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much all the time I have for the day. I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at ZapDrKavitko. Visit my office Facebook page and like us. That would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye.
This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speak.